to bring the lost to Jesus for membership in his family, to develop them into Christ-like maturity, to equip them for Christ's ministry on earth, to improve their quality of life, to be a ministry to the total man. My brothers and sisters, it's so important that we live life knowing our purpose. Life is full of challenges. All of us will face them. doesn't matter whether you are a believer or whether you are an unbeliever. You're going to face a challenge because man that is born of a woman is but a few days and all of those days you're going to be full of trouble. But it's so important when you know what your purpose is. You're able to face your challenge because you realize your calling. And so I want you to search God, study God, get closer to him, that he may be able to open your understanding as to why he has placed you on this earth. I want to take you today with your prayer, saints of God, to the book of Exodus. Chapter 2, something burning in my heart that I feel it's important for human beings to know. It's found in Exodus chapter 2, verse 21. And uh, those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to read along with me. Again, Exodus chapter 2, verse 21. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. Pause. Moses had gotten satisfied and comfortable in his life. The text says Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. And she bore him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in progress of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard the groaning, and God remembered his what? Help me say, God, God. is a covenant God. Now watch this, God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. When Moses writes this, and he doesn't just say his covenant with Abraham, but he dealt, deals with three generations. Help me say three generations. Meaning that the God of the Bible is a God of generations he remembered the original agreement that he had with Abraham and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them God God will interrupt your life I want to talk from this subject, finding your purpose in life. Talk back to me, say, I must find my purpose in life. Sad thing, sad thing about many people today. They live in this world 
but they really don't understand their purpose in life. They don't even understand why they were born. They literally live life from day to day, week to week, wondering what is my purpose. They really have no purpose in life. But I'm here today to share a message with you that none of you that are living is an accident. No, you, 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 your, your birth might have been in the sight of mankind. What man would call a mistake. But you got to understand you could not be alive. If it was not God's will for you to live. Now here is one of the beauties of serving Christ. Living for Christ, he then gives you a purpose for your life. Here is the sad thing, and I want you all to hear me. Here is the sad thing. Many of us who say we serve Christ really don't pursue his mind. We really don't pursue his will for our lives. We'll come to church on Sunday as great as this church is. I look at us. And many of us only come when it is convenient for us. But in order to really have a relationship with him, you've got to pursue him. Now listen to his words. He that hungers and thirsts Help me say hunger, hunger. And, thirst. and thirst. There's got to be in you a hunger. Notice he uses the word hunger. He uses the word thirst because those are two things in this life that man will pursue until they are satisfied. You will pursue hunger. You will pursue thirst until that thirst is satisfied, until that hunger is satisfied. Watch. Jesus says to us, you are the light of the world. I feel you. You're listening to me today. What does that mean? Yes. It means we are an example to the world, but God is light. Talk back to me. Say, God, God is, light. is light. What does that really mean? That really means that God is knowledge. God is knowledge of life. He is the light of the world. John, 1 John, tells you that if you walk in darkness, darkness is ignorance of the mind of God. When an individual walks in darkness, you can't see. And when you can't see, you're going to trip over a lot of things because you are ignorant and you can not see. Don't mean you're dumb. It means you lack knowledge. So when he talks about you are the light of the world, it really means that your life and my life 
are the knowledge of the world. People ought to get knowledge of the Jesus Christ that's in your life. If they can't get the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life, that tells me something is lacking in my life. So when they see my life, they ought to see a little knowledge of who? The knowledge of Jesus. Mm. And one of the biggest problems that we have today as so-called believers, we do not show the world the knowledge of Christ because we are not hungry enough. We are not thirsty enough. If you're truly thirsty, if you're hungry, you're not just going to eat once a week you're not going to just eat for just an hour and a half a week in order to satisfy your hunger to satisfy your thirst you gonna have to eat a little bit every day mm, I hear Jesus now in his sample prayer when he says these words, give me this day, my day. Mm, we need a little bit of his word, not just on Sunday afternoon for two hours. We need a, that word every day of our lives because the more of his word that you get, the more light you have or the more knowledge you possess, are y'all with me, about God and the more knowledge you get about God, the more understanding you're going to have about how to live your life. And when you learn how to live your life, you then have knowledge and you're going to learn about why you exist. You're going to learn why God wants you here and you're going to understand your purpose in life. Now I want you to take a look at our lesson text. We have a man who was a fugitive from justice. He had killed a man and was forced to flee from his home and country in order just to stay alive. Many of us have made errors in life that were setbacks to us that have hindered us y'all so quiet but you've got to realize that God is a God of mercy that God is a God of love and God can turn your stumbling block into a stepping stone it all depends on your attitude. It all depends on how you look at life. Moses was adopted into the royal family of Pharaoh. He was blessed to be one of Pharaoh's children and would have been a heir to the throne. But one day he saw an Egyptian and an Israelite and they were fighting. And while those men were fighting uh, because he had been programmed by his mother who was his babysitter. He turns around and he kills the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand and thought nobody saw him. The next 
day he goes out again and he sees two Hebrews, two Jews fighting. He attempted to stop them. And when he attempted to stop them in the midst of the fight, they rose up against him and said, Moses, who do you think you are? Do you think you're a lord over us? Are you going to kill us like you did that Egyptian? Are y'all with me? And Moses then knew he was in trouble. The Bible tells us that the Jewish historian, he goes on to say that Pharaoh only had one daughter and no sons. Moses would have been heir to the throne. Hebrews 11 and verse 24 says these words by faith Moses when he was come to years otherwise when he became a mature man refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Let's take a look at Moses. Moses who was adopted. Otherwise the question comes to my mind, Moses how did you know that you were a Hebrew? Can I give you a little of Josephus, Josephus, uh, the Jewish historian? Uh, he says, if you watch the story, it was Pharaoh who seen uh, the Egyptians growing in number. The numbers had gotten so great until it reminds me of the spirit of uh, Donald Trump. It reminds me the spirit of Donald Trump when he sees the, 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 the uh, Hispanic people coming in by the droves uh, and their numbers will outgrow that uh, of uh, the Caucasian people. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Pharaoh had that same spirit. This is why Solomon said uh, there is nothing new under the sun. What has been will be. And Pharaoh made a decree. And Pharaoh's decree said uh, I want you midwives. When them Jewish women start having babies. Uh, I want you to kill them boy babies. If they have girl babies, y'all looking at me so hard, it's in the Bible, it's there in the second chapter. You start in the first chapter of Exodus, it runs over into the second chapter. He told them there were two of them, the women's name were Sephora. Uh -huh, Sephora, and I can't get that second name, but it starts with an H. He told them women, he says, when them Jewish mothers start having them babies, uh, I want you to kill them boy babies but God stepped in that's why I love God so much because when you reach your end that's when the God of the Bible will step in uh, thank you Holy Ghost uh, that other woman's name was poor poor and Sephora poor and Sephora would not kill the boy babies. So when Pharaoh hit Pua and Sephora, they told him, he said, we can't kill them because uh, them, uh, the Jewish women, when they have their babies, they have them so quick. They, they're not like Egyptian women. They, they have their babies so quick until we can't get there. And the Bible said uh, because those women feared God, uh, that God got in their business uh, and blessed both of those women uh, to have homes. Are y'all with me? Point at me and say, Lord, Lord. anoint our pastor. So then this is what happened. Uh, Moses' mama, who was a Levite, her husband was a Levite. She then got pregnant uh, and she bore 
baby Moses. Now when Moses got to be about three months old, so says the Bible, she realized that she couldn't hide him no more. And I'm going to show you how God gets in the plan. When God gets in your life, you got to do some things yourself. But here, when you've done all you know how to do, that's when God will, will come in and do the rest for you. But you can't sit on the seat of do nothing. You got to show God some kind of works. If you show him some works, he'll come in and do the rest for you. Are y'all with me so far? Mm, she couldn't hide the baby no longer so she made a basket and when she put the baby in the basket she had enough wisdom to say to Moses' oldest sister her name was Miriam said listen Miriam I want you to watch your little brother you watch your little brother and I'm going to tell you family of God it was no accident that she would put him in the Nile River because she knew something she knew Pharaoh's daughter would go every afternoon to the Nile River and take her her annual bath so she says to the older sister she says sis I want you to watch your little brother and so Marion's standing there and the little baby Moses is in the basket are y'all with me he's in the basket and the Bible says he starts to weep he, he starts to cry and while he's crying, uh, the Spirit of God uh, gets in the heart uh, of Pharaoh's daughter. She hears that baby crying, uh, and she has her servants go look in that basket. They take baby Moses out of the basket, uh, and the Bible says she had uh, compassion on baby Moses and when she had that compassion uh, she wanted uh, to take him uh, and make him her own baby can't you see God uh, working this thing out uh, but then I want you to show show you how God uh, can take this thing just a little bit further because here you got Marion on the banks uh, looking at all of this uh, and Marion walks up on uh, Pharaoh's daughter and says to her listen uh, don't you need uh, somebody to nurse this baby seemed like she should have caught that uh, she, but see God uh, has a way of blinding the devil's eyes uh, she should have caught that and she said yes go get me a nurse uh, and guess what Mm, they go get uh, Moses' mama and the question comes how did Moses know how would he know that he was an Egyptian you got to remember his mama took him his mama was holding him in her arms his mama telling him baby don't you know you ain't no Egyptian you are a Hebrew matter of fact son how do you think I'm able to take you and feed you from my breast you my baby I want you to know look at my features you look like me look at the texture of my skin boy you are my baby but in order to save your life are y'all still with me in order to save your life you stay in Pharaoh's household here's the message that God gives me out of this I don't care what you are going through I don't care what the pain may be going on in your life God comes in and takes over where you can't do nothing else when Marion had done all she could 
do. God came in and took over and made a way out of no way. And as I'm standing here to tell you this afternoon, he's the same God yesterday. Y'all don't hear me. He's the same God today and he'll be the same God tomorrow. All you got to do is have faith and believe. Can I tell y'all something else? If God has called you for a purpose, you may not understand it. You may not see it now. You may pain now. But if God's got a call on your life, he'll let you go through hell. But that same God won't let you die until the promise in your life is fulfilled. That's why David said, weeping, y'all don't hear me, weeping may endure for a night, but if you hang on in there, joy. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I don't see it now. <laughs> But I ain't going to give up because uh, God uh, is on my side uh, and I'm going to stay in his will uh, and I ain't going to let nothing uh, turn me around. Uh, I'm like that old song. Uh, I'm determined uh, to walk with Jesus. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, through hard trials, uh, tribulation, uh, persecution, uh, I'll be faithful. Uh, I'm how many determined folks do I have? If you're really determined, I want you to jump to your feet. Tell three folks, I am determined. And go on and give God praise in the house of the Lord.